Tales of the Jedi is finally here, and to cut right to the chase, I loved it. So here's the plan for how this video and our next one are going to work. Today we're going to give a very brief spoiler-free review, and then spend some time diving deep into episodes 2, 3, and 4. Of course, if you watch the show, those are the episodes which focus on Count Dooku. Our next video will dive into the Ahsoka Tano shorts, or episodes 1, 5, and 6, as well as possibly an episode ranking. We're doing it this way just so we can dive a little bit deeper in, without the video being close to 30 minutes. That being said, if you enjoyed this video and would be interested in seeing our Ahsoka one, be sure to click subscribe and that notification bell. Maybe drop a like while you're down there too, it really helps out our very young channel. With that out of the way, let's get into our spoiler-free review of Tales of the Jedi as a whole. If you are a big fan of Star Wars The Clone Wars, you are probably going to love this. This right here is peak Star Wars animation, building on the massive improvement seen in The Clone Wars Season 7 and The Bad Batch. Little details like Jedi robes and clone armor look so good. The score by Kevin Kinner is also phenomenal. If you are a big fan of either Count Dooku or Ahsoka Tano, you're going to really get a lot out of this. It builds on their characters' backgrounds in a way we've never seen on screen before. That being said, if you're big into both Legends and some off-screen canon lore around these characters, there are definitely a few retcons, especially in the case of the E.K. Johnson Ahsoka novel. We did already see this in the case of the Siege of Mandalore, but just be prepared. The show is structured in a bit of an odd way, beginning with an Ahsoka episode before jumping to three straight Dooku episodes, and then jumping back for two more about Ahsoka. Ahsoka's first episode, titled Life and Death, is also honestly a bit skippable, but not awful by any means. Her standout episode was definitely episode 5, Practice Makes Perfect, with episode 6, Resolve, not far behind, at least in my opinion. In terms of Dooku, both episode 2, Justice, and episode 3, Choices were solid, but the standout was for sure episode 4, The Sith Lord. Tales of the Jedi was also pretty dark and very, very emotional. It takes a lot to get me, but practice makes perfect really got me. Prepare yourself. The show does jump around the timeline a lot, but it's easy enough to follow. I really do hope that we are fortunate enough to get a second season. I think there are so many other characters they could explore, but that's another video for another day. Without touching on spoilers, those are my overall thoughts and first impressions, but what are yours? Sound off in the comments below. Now shifting gears into spoiler territory. If you have not yet seen Tales of the Jedi, this is where you click off and come back later. Let's get into episode 2, Justice. Or as we mentioned earlier, Dooku's first episode. We begin aboard a Jedi T-6 shuttle with the Count and his apprentice, a young Qui-Gon Jinn, voiced by Liam Neeson's son, Michael Richardson. Dooku tells Qui-Gon to land outside of the village they're heading to. Tensions are already high enough. They land on the very swampy and foresty looking planet. At first, I almost thought it was Corvus from The Mandalorian Season 2. As they enter the village, every house's lights start to turn off. The only somewhat lively place is a cantina. They enter and Dooku asks, where's the child? It turns out they're looking for the kidnapped son of the planet's senator named Dagone. One woman asks why they should help. Dooku then sits down and sets his lightsaber on the table, telling her they want to resolve the situation for everyone, not just the senator. The woman basically says, look at how he treats us. The people are poor and hungry. He only cares about himself. Now we know this is going to resonate with Dooku. One of the reasons he left the Jedi Order was that he felt the Jedi were more serving the Republic and the Senate than the light side of the Force. We know those views also really rub off on Qui-Gon Jinn too. The Jedi are there to rescue the child of the kidnapped senator, but that senator is greedy and abuses the system. But the Jedi are supposed to just turn a blind eye. Qui-Gon suggests that they elect a new senator, but obviously he's still a little young and naive at this point. It's definitely not that simple. The woman and a few of the other villagers take the pair to see the senator's son, and he is completely fine. He's even like, this is nothing compared to how these villagers are living every single day. They had no choice to do this, they had to. He was completely oblivious to it as well, rarely ever leaving the capital or Coruscant. That's when the senator arrives with soldiers. The villagers blame the Jedi, but Dooku mentions the senator didn't know about this mission. The senator demands that the Jedi arrest the villagers, but they refuse, saying the investigation is not complete and his son is safe. The senator wants to be the judge of that, his guards and the villagers both draw their blasters. 
Dooku and Qui-Gon refuse to step aside, drawing their lightsabers. A shootout erupts, with all of the villagers going down. It's down to the Jedi, standing across from the Senator and a few of his guards. The Senator threatens to destroy this town and others as an example, saying not even the Jedi can stand in his way. That's when he's cut off, gasping for air and clutching his throat. Dooku starts to force choke him and pushes Qui-Gon back into the wall. This might actually be the first time Dooku ever taps into the dark side. Dooku raises his lightsaber and says corruption like yours must be eradicated. Again, exact reasons that he left the Jedi Order. Before he can make the kill, Qui-Gon comes out with the Senator's son and gets in the way. Dooku releases and the son is pretty much like father, how could you do this to our people? The son promises the villagers he's going to help them, and he departs with his father. Dooku and Qui-Gon observe some of the rebuilding efforts, and the two Jedi share a nice moment where Dooku calls Jin a wiser man than he is. That brings us into episode 3 of Tales of the Jedi, and Dooku's second, titled Choices. We find Dooku aboard a shuttle with Mace Windu this time. They're heading to retrieve the body of a dead Jedi named Master Katri. She died in an accident which also involved a senator who happened to survive. Dooku thinks there's something more going on, while Mace is saying they need to focus on the council's instructions. One thing this episode does very well is showcase the difference in ideologies between these two. Mace Windu is very by the books and about following the council's directions, which we all know often fuels the corruption of the senate and the republic, exactly what Dooku is becoming more and more disillusioned with. They arrive on the planet, which is Raxus Secundus, and are greeted by guards. Now Raxus is actually a pretty significant planet, serving as the capital of the Confederacy of Independent Systems or the Separatists during the Clone Wars. And there are a few moments within this episode that definitely point to why Dooku may have chosen this planet for that purpose. They meet Senator Larrick, who seems very nervous as the Jedi ask about Master Katri and how she was killed. They decide to head to where the incident took place. Windu wants to wait and contact the council, following protocol, but Dooku protests and says they really shouldn't. They head to the forest where the incident took place and start to investigate. Dooku and Windu question that if Katri was attacked as soon as she got off of the ship, that how come there's no damage actually on the ship? Dooku points out that the attack had to have been a surprise from behind her back, from someone she trusted. He demands the truth, igniting his lightsaber, Windu telling him to stand down. The senator tells them the guards killed her before they shoot him from behind as well. Some security droids emerge and a fight erupts where we get to see two of the best lightsaber duelists of all time in action. They quickly dispatch of the droids and a defiant guard. They take the one remaining as a prisoner. Dooku asks to know why they killed Katri. The guards explain the senator was using his seat to become rich at the expense of Raxus and its people very similar to what we saw in the last episode. They were going to force the senator to further their agenda. That's why they only killed Katri and not him. Windu asks why the guard didn't go to the Jedi about this. He responds by calling the Jedi the lapdogs of the Senate, putting their needs first. Again, a key reason behind Dooku's fall. Aboard the Jedi ship, Dooku talks to the guard, basically saying that his ideology had its points, but he doesn't agree with the methods they attempted to use. They load up Katri's body to bring back to the Jedi temple. Windu asks if the council will be happy with Dooku's tactics. He says he has no problem explaining himself. Dooku proceeds to ask Windu if the Jedi can truly keep peace while taking everything the Senate says as law. Again, this really shows the contrast in views of both Windu and Dooku. We had to Katri's funeral at the temple, where we see several other familiar Jedi, including Yoda, Plo Koon, Ki-Adi Mundi, and CSE Tin. After the funeral, we catch up with Dooku and Mace one more time, we find out that Windu will be taking Katri's seat on the Jedi High Council, where we see him in the prequel films. Windu was given the seat over Dooku because he stuck to the mission, whereas Dooku interfered in a way that got a senator killed. That pretty much brings us into Episode 4, The Sith Lord, which actually takes place at the same time as Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. We catch up with Dooku, who we can tell is getting older. He's in the Jedi Archives at the temple. He accesses one of the files using the code of Master Sifo DS. The archive file he's accessing is on the planet Kamino, where the clones were at this point just beginning to be produced. 
Dooku erases Kamino from the archives, which we know comes up in Attack of the Clones when Obi-Wan is searching for the planet and Jango Fett. I'm looking for a planetary system called Kamino. Kamino. It doesn't show up on the archive charts. Kamino. It's not a system I'm familiar with. Are you sure you have the right coordinates? According to my information, it should appear in this quadrant here, just south of the Rishi Maze. I hate to say it, but it looks like the system you're searching for doesn't exist. Impossible. Perhaps the archives are incomplete. Dooku then talks to the librarian, Master Jocasta, who informs Dooku that Qui-Gon believes he's encountered a Sith Lord on Tatooine. We know exactly where this was in Episode 1 with Darth Maul. Of course, at this time, the Sith were believed to have been extinct for over a thousand years, after Darth Bane's Rule of Two kicked in, and they remained hidden. Dooku then heads to talk to Qui-Gon, who's with Yaddle. This is obviously an older Qui-Gon Jinn, with Liam Neeson taking over as the voice. Another interesting thing to note is Yaddle, voiced by Bryce Dallas Howard, actually talks normally. She doesn't speak in backwards riddles like Yoda, meaning that entire species isn't necessarily that way. Perhaps it's because Yoda is significantly older, around 850 years old come the Clone Wars, and 900 by the time he dies in Return of the Jedi. Yaddle might only be around 3 or 400, or if you're on Twitter, it's because Yoda is weird and a crazy goblin who just does it for fun. Anyways, Qui-Gon tells Dooku about Maul. Dooku mentions he's been warning the Council about the coming darkness for years, but like Qui-Gon's claims of Maul being a Sith Lord, it seems to fall on deaf ears. Yaddle, who's actually on the council at this point, we see her there in The Phantom Menace, she says they need to be cautious until they know more. Dooku tells Qui-Gon to be careful, but we all know what happens to him. <laughs> Qui-Gon says that Obi-Wan will be there to help him. Dooku says he hopes to one day meet him, making their conversation in Attack of the Clones that much more emotional. It's a great pity that our paths have never crossed before, Obi-Wan. Qui-Gon always spoke very highly of you. I wish he were still alive. I could use his help right now. Qui-Gon Jinn would never join you. Don't be so sure, my young Jedi. You forget but he was once my apprentice, just as you were once his. We now make a bit of a time jump to after Qui-Gon's death. Dooku is mourning at a place that he used to bring his young apprentice. Yaddle arrives and mentions the Jedi are heading to Naboo for Qui-Gon's funeral, which we see in The Phantom Menace. Dooku decides not to go to the funeral. The score here was so good and so tragic. Yaddle asks if he can let Qui-Gon go. Dooku says he really doesn't have a choice. We cut to somewhere familiar that I immediately picked up on, the same platform where Anakin took off from to go interfere in the Palpatine and Windu duel in Revenge of the Sith. Dooku even takes a very similar looking speeder. Little does he know, Yaddle is following him. They head to the works, which we talked about in our Tales of the Jedi preview video. This is a place in the industrial part of Coruscant where Darth Sidious would hold secret meetings and even train Darth Maul. We see it at the end of Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Dooku meets with Palpatine and tells him he went too far killing Qui-Gon. Palps is like, what do you mean? We both lost an apprentice. Maul is dead too. All in service of their greater goals. As Yaddle listens in from afar, Dooku says he's done everything he asked. sifo Dyas, Kamino, the clones, essentially betraying everything and everyone he knows. That's pretty much when Yaddle emerges and tells Dooku it's not too late. They can stand together and end this all before it starts, and Dooku's crimes will be pardoned. Palpatine comes back with reminding Dooku of the Jedi blindly serving a corrupt Senate, telling Dooku to prove his loyalty and kill Yaddle. This is what it all comes down to. Dooku has to decide. And with everything that's happened, not only with the Senate, but Qui-Gon just dying, he chooses Palpatine. The duel begins. It's clear that although Yaddle is good, she is nowhere near the level of Yoda nor Count Dooku. He uses a special lightsaber form known as Form 2, Makashi. That form focused on dueling, and when it's used by Dooku, who is one of the best duelists ever, not to mention who has a special curved lightsaber hilt 
that in real life was developed for Christopher Lee, who was an incredible fencer, it's a pretty deadly combination. Yaddle hides and tries to talk sense into the Count, saying she even left the council and he was right about so many things. Qui-Gon didn't have to die, but it doesn't work. They continue to fight and Dooku slams the hangar door down on her. Absolutely brutal. I gasped when this happened, but Yaddle actually just barely survives. She stumbles down and Dooku says he just wants to bring peace and order to the galaxy. Yaddle says that so many have already suffered for what he calls order. Dooku responds saying, then let me give you peace, Master Yaddle, and finishes her. This was definitely the moment that sealed the deal for him. His eyes almost looked a bit to be a Sith yellow, but they are brown so it could have just been the lighting, but we had to throw it out there. Palpatine grins to close out the episode. Wow, that was incredible. I'll keep this short because this video is already long enough and I want to keep some of my final thoughts for after we talk about Ahsoka's episodes, but that was exactly what I was hoping for from the Count Dooku ones. But what did you think of Count Dooku's Tales of the Jedi episodes? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to hit subscribe to catch our second Tales of the Jedi breakdown, and or episode 8 will be up in the next couple of days as well, so stay tuned. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching, and may the Force be with you. Red 5, standing by.